The next one, it's about darts. So far, we have been using uh, evolutionary algorithms, reinforcement like learning algorithms. Can you actually do plain vanilla gradient descent to do architecture search? At first sight, it might seem impossible because those choices that you have between a separable convolution and a convolution, or the choice between using a convolution with filter size three by three or five by five, these are discrete choices. And uh, that's why people started using reinforcement learning and evolutionary algorithms, because these are discrete choices. And whenever you have discrete choices, it's not easy, or if not impossible, to do gradient descent. But can you actually try to do that? And again, this one you are going to be able to do at home. This one is also going to end up being cheap. You don't need to have 2,000 GPU days of reinforcement learning. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do 3,150 GPU days of evolution. You can do this with one GPU in one and a half days to four days. And this has to do with the search space and how you design your optimization. What is your search space? Let's think of a cell. And this is going to be your microstructure. Let's think of it as a directed acyclic graph. So it's going to be a graph that doesn't have any cycles like this. It has a bunch of ordered nodes. So these are ordered 0, 1, 2, 3. So these are the nodes in your cell. That's the input. That's the output of the cell. And then uh, you want to know what operations you want to do on those, on those cells. So those are the question marks. What should be your edges? And each one of these nodes, you can think of them as your feature maps. You can th think of them as tensors that have a height, they have a width, and they have a couple of channels. And then you want to do some operations on them, like convolution. So each node, let's represent it by xi. And as I mentioned, these could be feature maps in your CNNs. Edges are some operations. For instance, do nothing. In that case, there is no edge. Just copy and paste. That's going to be a residual connection. Do a convolution. Do a max pulling. So these are your operations. And then the outcome, xj, for instance, here, or actually here, is those operations being applied on everybody else. For instance, you take as input node 1, you do some operation on it. You take as input node 0, you do some operation on it, and then you just add them up. And for each cell, you're going to have two inputs and a single output. So you're going to have two inputs are going to go to your cell and one output is going to come out. If you have a convolutional cell because you have images and you want to use convolutions, you're going to take as input two previous layers, like what we were doing with MassNet. If you have a recurrent cell, you have your current state and then the previous hidden step, those are going to be the inputs. And at the same time, you're going to include a zero operation, which is going to indicate that there is no connection between these two nodes. Because in the end, you're adding them up, and then maybe you don't want to have any connection here. So you want to have the option to get rid of that. You cannot do gradient descent on that. So it's not doable. Because these are still discrete choices. What operation are you going to do here? The answer is, what operation are you going to do? I'm going to do all of them. And then do a weighted... Uh, summation of all of those operations. So let's say you have a set of all candidate operations, convolution, max pooling, nothing. You can have an edge, which is a linear combination of all of your operations. So you just do all of them. But then these weights are going to add up to one because of the soft max operation here. So it's a weighted combination of all of these operations. Do convolution, do max pooling, do nothing with some weights. And this is going to give you your operation weight. So this is a vector having the same size as the number of operations. And then you're going to push them through a softmax to give you numbers that are from 0 to 1 and add up to 1. And your architecture is now the choice of alpha. Now, alpha is a continuous variable or is a continuous vector that you can optimize over using gradient descent. So this is beautiful. And this is exactly the same idea. What operation should I do here? Do all of them and then put some weights on them. Okay, and then you're going to end up with a bi-level optimization problem. In the lower level, you're going to look at your loss on the training data. You're optimizing over the weights of your neural network, over the weights of your convolution, max pooling, zero, 
separable convolution, whatever operations that you have. And this is exactly similar to the idea of sharing your weights for the children. We just saw that. It's very similar. Given alpha, you're going to be able to solve for omega. And then you take that omega of alpha, put it in your validation loss, and then try to find the, minimi the minimizer of that object. And now these guys, you can do gradient descent. So let's try to do that. And in this case, omega are going to be your lower level parameters and alpha are going to be your upper level parameters. So you can think of alpha as your hyperparameters and these are as your parameters of the model. Now you're going to do approximate gradient descent. What is that? You want the gradient of this objective with respect to alpha. You can first take a step in the direction of optimizing this loss function on your training data and then approximate the gradient with that. Don't optimize this fully, optimize it only one step. Take one step in the direction of reducing the value of your loss function, which is gonna be the gradient of your loss function. And that guy, you can do your chain rule. This is gonna end up being the gradient of alpha. And this term here, you can just rename it to be omega prime. But omega prime is a function of alpha. You can see it here. So you're going to need the gradient square with respect to alpha. There is a gradient here with respect to omega of your loss times the chain rule, whatever that's coming out of your chain. rule, And that's your finite differencing. That one you're going to approximate with finite differencing because it's going to end up being much faster than automatic differentiation. Because for automatic differentiation, now you need to have a for loop on your alpha, which is not a good idea. Once you get your gradients, you are going to be able to do gradient descent to optimize both, both alpha and omega once that is done. Initially, you started with equal weights for all of these operations. Now, some of them are going to have a higher weight on them, and you only keep the higher weights to give you your architecture in the end. So you're going to do an arc max of your alphas, and that's going to pick out these arrows. And then you can look at the performance on ImageNet using a neural network that is trained on C410, or you can apply it on recurrent neural networks. But the big picture is, again, here, your architecture search is much faster, but you're sacrificing memory. So you need to store all of these operations, the weights and biases of all of these operations in memory. I think I'm gonna stop here. And for those of you who want to leave, you can leave. For those of you who want to stay and ask questions, I'll be around. So there is a good question in the chat. Why don't we keep a weighted combination of the operations for the final model? You could, but then your model is going to end up being giant because for each arrow that you have here, there is some weights and biases associated to that. And you have to store all of them. You have to carry them with you all the time, to your test data and to your production. So you can just get rid of the ones that are really small. It is like model pruning, but now you're only keeping one of these arrows. And then this model is much smaller than this model. Okay, any other questions?